Hello, I am Fue. I'm a student uh, in a master's program here in industrial design. Uh, my advisors are Professor Wesley Terezi, as you all know, and also Professor Gilio Silevsky from Aeronautics and Space uh, Faculty of Engineering. Okay, well, this is me. Um, I've practically been surfing, kite surfing, windsurfing all my life. Um, the sea is the most important thing in my, in, the sea is the most important thing in my life, and most of the people here will say that I've been more, more time in the sea than at the university. So naturally, my research, okay. So naturally, my research is gonna be about surfboards. And um, we're gonna make, take a small step towards rationalizing the surfboard uh, design um, by changing the conventional way surfboards are planned and shaped today. So, today's surfboards are either hand-shaped by a professional car craftsman named the Shaper, which takes a styrofoam block and slowly cuts away and sends it into the uh, required shape until he's happy and the surfboard is ready. He does it practically by hunch or by his experience from all the uh, surfboards he's built before. The other way, and more industrial way, is doing the same thing, but with a simple computer-aided software, which the shaper then can uh, manipulate and uh, uh, change the length and width and the curves of the surfboard, and then the output will be transferred into a CNC machine, milling machine, and then the same process of taking the styrofoam block and cutting it away, this time by a CNC machine, and the surfboard is made. The problem with this is that Nobody really knows how the surfboard is gonna behave or how it's gonna interact with the water until it touches the water for the very first time. Well, basically, it's a blank board until the surfer tries it for the first time and then gives its impression or evaluation of the board. So, what we're gonna try to achieve in this research, we're gonna try to take the first scientific step of predicting how a surfboard will behave in the water before it's even manufactured. Today, there are the shapers that work on trial and error, and also the in on the other uh, spectrum, there are engineers who can do flow simulations and drag tests and towing tanks and can, a lot of, and can achieve a lot of data of forces operating on the board. But there's no bridge between the surfers or the, and, the, and the engineers or, or between physical data or forces and surfers' evaluation slash belief. In this research, we're gonna to try to find correlation between measurable measurements of forces on surfboards and surfers' evaluation. How are we gonna do it? The, the, the research is gonna contract in two stages. Stage number one, we're gonna do sea trials where surfboards will be evaluated by surfers, and stage two, we'll be taking the same surfboards that were evaluated by surfers into the civil engineering towing tank and finding the forces operating on them. So we acquired five surfboards, they are classic shortboards, which is the most common type of surfboard used today. Um, they're all commercial surfboards with no, uh, well-known brands that have been proven before and uh, have been surfed before. Uh, uh, the same models have been surfed by thousands of surfers. We, b we acquired a series of five boards, which, which are all in the same um, pa parameters of height, wi width, and volume. They each have a small change, so at the end we can compare them to one another. The next step we did was to unbrand them because branding pl plays a big role in the surfing industry and well-known brands, automatically the surfers will say that the boards are better than unknown brands and that way we, we, when the boards are plain white, nobody can really know if the board is any good or what brand was it and everybody comes as a clean slate. We also gave each board a long serial number so we can identify it. And also we can give the same board to the same surfer a couple of times and each time to, to check that the results he gave us are accurate and not that he's doing it just by feeling. So now we get to the surfers. They're all very experienced surfers who have surfed for a lot of years and have a, a lot of experience and can evaluate the board and give us an honest opinion about the, the board itself. The riding style is almost the, is compared to the short board. They're all com coming from short board uh, riding and their dimensions are almost the same. Their height, wage, fitness, and gender. Hello, that's, that's, 
Okay, so what are we gonna evaluate underwater? We took the basic components of surfing, which are three maneuvers. The top turn, which is where the, the surfer turns the boat from the top of the wave down towards the bottom. It's also so called like off the lip. And the bottom turn, which the surfer turns the boat from the bottom of the the bottom of the wave towards the top with the speed and momentum he gained. And a wave entry is um, when the surfer stands up after he's paddling to catch the wave. Ah, oh, sorry. How was it all there? Okay. So, what happens when we found the surfers, the surfboards, and uh, what we want to evaluate, but now we encountered a really serious problem. How can we turn a subjective evaluation into a number? So we're not the first to encounter this problem, and in the 60s, uh, test pilots and the NASA engineers encountered the same problems. The test pilots needed to say, needed to tell the engineers what they're feeling about the plane. So they made this Cooper Harper scale. It's basically a one to 10 uh, scale, meaning one is the best, the surfboard or the plane. Uh, behaves the best, and 10 is the worst. And the, the scale itself is divided into four uh, parts, one to three. There's no need, the surfboard is pretty good, and there's no need for change. Four to six, the surfer suggests some changes are made to the board. Seven to nine, um, the board has to be changed. There, there has to be made some changes to the board for it to com continue surfing. And then the board is not surfable. We don't have any 10. Uh, results on the board because all the boards are uh, bought off the shelf. So this is how it looks like. Um, one, one wave from one session. Each surfer uh, surfs from 45 minutes to an hour and a half until he can give an evaluation of the test um, of the surfboard. And after his session, he fills out these two papers. On the right side, on the left side, you can see the Cooper Harper scale and the results from the maneuvers that the surfer made. And on the right side, you can see the information about the surfer, the sea conditions, and a verbal explanation what the surfer felt about, uh, about the surfboard itself. Um, this research has been conducted since October and is still running. And for us now, this is the results that we got, and now I will explain. Let's take, uh, for example, a board number 452. You can see on, on the top um, all the results they got from all the surfers. And on the bottom, the average for each maneuver, uh, the average uh, results and they got from each maneuver. And overall, you can see this board got a pretty high score. And now we can see the graph of all the boards and all the surfers together. And we can see the graph is divided into three parts. The lower part, means the board did an excellent job. In the middle, an average job, and at the top, the poor, a, poor, a very poor job. It's very interesting to see these results, because when you go to a surfer and you ask him, what do you think about the board? Automatically, he says, each one feels it differently, and, nobody, and you cannot compare surfers and surfboards, and everybody has his magic board. So at the end of, for now, since October, we had like almost uh, 10 people that surfed uh, five surfboards, like 50 surfs, and we got the same results for almost every one of them. So let's go through this uh, quickly. We can see that board 452 got an excellent results on all its maneuvers, and that's on, on the other hand, you can see that this board, which is, looks the same, and is supposed to be the same board, got a really poor, poor uh, results on all the maneuvers. Also board 105 got average results on all the maneuvers, and the most interesting, are these two last boards that got on some maneuvers were excellent and some maneuvers were only average, average scale results. Um, stage two of the test will be taking place in the civil engineering towing tank and uh, measures will be, the boards will be dragged in the tank and measures will be forcing, will be uh, forces acting on the boards will be measured. Uh, the measures were gonna be, the forces were gonna be measured are uh, drag and momentum and X, Y, and Z uh, axes. And after that, when we accumulate all that data, oh, sorry, uh, we can compare the, sur uh, the surface evaluation from the Cooper Harper scales um, to the data we gathered in the towing tank. And that will be the end of this research. For some further work, if this will go on, 
we will be able to, if we will find correlation, we will be able to predict surfboard behavior, and then we can make a software that customizes the surfboard uh, from the, what the surfer really wants and what the feeling the surfer wants to get out of the board. Thank you very much.